So for this first step, I'm just taking an eyebrow pencil, you can also use an eyeliner if you'd like, and I'm tracing out the outline of where I want the liquid latex and the fake skin to be. You can trace your outline different than mine, it doesn't have to be the same, you can make it however you like. And then I'm just taking the liquid latex on a little sponge and dabbing it over top of the outline because like I said, this is where the skin is going to be. Personally, I do this in small sections because if you do it the whole section at one time, it will dry before you get the toilet paper on. Um, but I'm just taking thin, thin strips of toilet paper and placing them just however they look good. You want the strips to be very thin because if they're too thick, they'll look unnatural and chunky and they won't blend in later. By the way, just a side note, I am sick right now, so if it sounds like I'm talking through my nose, I am. I'm sick, so sorry, just bear with me. After placing that toilet paper down on that wet liquid latex, you want to go back over the entire section that you worked on with liquid latex. This will cause the toilet paper to soak up the latex and it will cause it to harden. This is how we're going to get our fake skin later on to be able to peel up. So you'll see me just placing little pieces down, sticking them down as I go. And like I said, the thinner the piece, the better. Right there, that piece that I just placed, you can see how thin it is. And whenever we go to peel it up later on, it's going to look natural like a real piece of skin. After applying that last layer of liquid latex, you want to let it dry probably about 5-10 to 10 minutes. You want to make sure it is completely dry before you do any other step because if you don't, it's going to be slippery and goopy and it's just going to be hard to work with. After this is completely dry, after that latex has hardened, you can go in and kind of tug and pull on the edges and just kind of pull it up enough just to make it look like a layer of skin. You kind of want to be able to get your finger underneath of it. You'll see me run my finger underneath the liquid latex here and that'll just help to pull it up and then later on we'll go in with a couple different eyeshadows and some fake blood to add dimension to the cut. To make everything blend out better, I did go in with the foundation here and just cover over top of that liquid latex to help it blend out easier. Moving on to the jack-o'-lantern side of the face, I just used the Maybelline Blackest Black Gel Eyeliner and I used a pencil brush to draw the outline of the jack-o'-lantern's eye and then I just used my finger to blend it all in. It just worked better for my finger and it covered more area so I felt like it was quicker that way. Also, I did my nose with this same gel eyeliner. If you don't have this eyeliner, you can use black face paint, but I just felt like this covered better and I wanted it to be as black as possible. Using the same products, I went ahead and filled in my nose. I just kind of made a circle around the tip of my nose and filled that in with my finger. After filling the nose part in with my finger, it didn't look as precise, so I went back in with that pencil brush just to re-outline everything, and then I am going in with an orange face paint. This one is from Walmart, and I'm just using an actual paintbrush, and I'm filling in all of the spots that I want to be orange, just the rest of the pumpkin everywhere that is not black, and I just went around the eyes, under the cut also, because in the end that'll make it look more blended. So for the mouth of your jack-o'-lantern, you can do this however you want. You can just do like a simple smile, or if you want it to be creepy, you can draw it like a smile and add teeth. I just drew a line from each corner of my mouth out to my ear to make the line for my teeth to sit on. And then for the teeth, I just drew triangles. Some are pointy, some are round. They're all different shapes and sizes. To me, that looks creepier, and in the end, I think it looks better. So I just kind of went with it. If you're concerned about your triangles not being the same size, don't worry about it. They don't have to be the same. To fill the teeth in, I just used that same gel eyeliner. I just filled in all of the teeth and then I go in with a Wet n Wild Matte Liquid Lipstick in the end just to cover my lips. If all you have is face paint, like I said before, you can use that. Personally, I prefer to use the lipstick for my lips. It's just more comfortable for me and it's not as drying on my lips and I just feel like it lasts longer. So if you want to do that, you can. If you don't have a liquid lipstick that is black, just use face paint. After filling in the entire mouth part of the jack-o'-lantern, I go in with a black eyeshadow. I just use this to set everything down just to make sure that nothing smudges. This part is completely optional, but I just went in with a liquid eyeliner just to kind of clean up all the mistakes that I made and just to make everything look more precise. So now that we are finished with the entire face, I'm moving on to shading and highlighting. So to shade, I'm just taking a black and brown, a mixture of both 
on a narrow pencil brush and I'm just kind of drawing lines down my face. You will see as I move the line down my face, it does start to kind of curve toward my chin. I do this just to make it look more realistic, just like the curves on a pumpkin. Once I've made those lines all the way down my face, I just took a clean blending brush and just blended all these lines out. I want to make the middle of the line still pretty dark, but I want to blend the outer edges out. This just makes it look more like the pumpkin has a curve and just makes it look like the pumpkin has creases where they're supposed to be and indents in the pumpkin as if it were real. To add light and highlight to the pumpkin, I just went in with the yellow face paint on my finger and just kind of dabbed that in the center. It doesn't have to cover the whole center, um, but I did dab it right in the middle. And then I went in with a little bit of white face paint and just put even less of that in the middle. And then here I'm just moving on with a black eyeshadow, just running that underneath of the fake skin, running it underneath the cut. And then you'll also see me kind of run it on top of the skin. That's just to make it look bruised and give it more of a gory effect. Also to add to that bruising effect, I added a red and a plum shade just from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. All the eyeshadows I've used are from that palette. I just use this to run over top of the skin to make it look bloody and to make it look, like I said before, bruised. Now for everyone's favorite part, the blood! So I just went in with a regular blending brush, dipped it in that blood, and just kind of dabbed it all over the cut. And then I also went in just with the squeezy tube of the blood and kind of scored that all down the cut. And then you'll see me go in with a Q-tip and I just run it around. That just added texture, kind of made the blood look chunky. And I'll also run it underneath of the cut just to blend everything out and make it look real. Okay guys, and this is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more Halloween tutorials, then please leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see. And as always, I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys! Okay.